Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from round 3 of this year's FIDE World Rapid Championship. Uh, it just finished, it is Magnus Carlsen versus uh, Armenian Grandmaster uh, uh, Tigran Petrosyan, uh, named obviously, uh, or maybe it's not obvious, but I'm guessing he was named after uh, the former world champion Petrosyan. And uh, we, we even have a couple of uh, uh, Indian Grandmasters uh, called Ananda, and I know for two uh, of them, maybe, maybe there's more, but yeah, I'm pretty sure in like 10 years we'll have like 20... Uh, Indian Grandmasters called uh, Anand. Uh, so, you know, being a World Chess Champion will inspire uh, many people. Uh, now, uh, what can he do against Magnus with the black pieces? It's a really wonderful game. You guys will enjoy this one. Uh, let's check it out and do use that hashtag suggestion as later on I will uh, go through them and check out your suggestions. So Magnus uh, with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, pawn to g6 going for the modern defense. We have d4, bishop to g7, knight to f3 and pawn to d6 now. We have not bishop to d3 by Magnus and knight to c6. Uh, c3 and the immediate pawn to e5. We have pawn to d5 and knight c to e7. Uh, Magnus advances the pawn. We have pawn to c4 and pawn to f5, getting a sort of a, a King's Indian um, type setup. Knight to c3 and knight to f6 now. And there are a couple of moves that uh, have been played here, but Magnus goes knight g5 right away. And it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So what can be done here? Okay, we have castles. There is no stopping knight e6, but you, of course, you will capture the knight. So it's not really an issue. We have castles and now pawn to c6, attacking Magnus' strong center here. Uh, queen to b3, uh, putting pressure on the king, uh, x-raying the king basically through this long diagonal, and also putting pressure on b7, so you can't really develop your light square bishop. So first, uh, uh, Tigran uh, moves the king, king to h8, and now bishop to d2. We have pawn to f4, uh, as is uh, customary in the King's Indian, and now rook a to c1. We have pawn to c5, uh, stopping uh, Magnus from executing pawn to c5, and now queen to a3. Uh, we have pawn to h6, kicking away the knight, and knight to e6. And of course, you capture this knight, you're not going to give up the exchange. We have captures, captures, and now uh, there are a couple of ways you could continue this. And objectively, best probably would be knight to h7, shifting the knight to g6 to go after the pawn, uh, and uh, let's say something like b4 is played knight to g5. We're going to see a trade here. And after some like rook f to d1, now the knight captures on e6. And after let's say bishop b2, trying to get something uh, on the black queen here, knight to d4. And this is a beautiful setup here with a very strong knight on d4. And now you're going to uh, prepare your pieces for uh, further pushing on the king side. But uh, Tigran decided to execute pawn to f3 right away. And his idea is that, uh, well, regardless of ma what Magnus does, he's going to capture the pawn on e6 with the queen and get the queen into the king side to checkmate the white king. Now, can he do this? Well, Magnus even invites him. He plays pawn to g3. And okay, well, what's stopping him from queen captures on e6 and queen to h3? Nothing really. Queen to c8 and now Magnus goes knight to d5. Okay, there is some pressure on the knight on e7, uh, but just queen captures on e6, defends a knight, and still threatens queen to h3. But Magnus just moves the rook, rook to f1, or rather rook f to e1, uh, which means that if queen comes to h3, you can kick it away with bishop to f1 uh, with tempo, and also you, you guard the, the, the g2 square. So instead, after rook f to e1, we have knight e captures on d5, c captures on d5, and now queen to g4. A very sneaky move, uh, preparing pawn to h5 and pawn to h h4 but also putting pressure on the e4 pawn meaning that magnus cannot play bishop to f1 as the e4 pawn will be undefended but magnus sees through right right through this and he plays bishop to f1 nonetheless the point is uh, that if you capture uh, with the knight then rook to c4 and you blunder that knight so that's not possible so instead after bishop to f1 we have pawn to b6 sorry that's not a b6 pawn to b6 and now pawn to h3 kicking away the queen queen h5 and now pawn to b4 uh, as usual uh, black will play on the king side in the king's indian and the white will play on the queen side pawn to g5 we have b captures on c5 b captures and queen to a6 now putting pressure on the weak d6 pawn if you can eliminate it then you get a passed d pawn and your winning chances improve drastically and now you could go for something like rook f to d8 and sort of keep this rook defending the a7 pawn but you really don't need it since uh, if the a7 pawn is captured you can just move the rook back 
can go after the a2 pawn. So he just moves the rook to d8. Uh, and now rook to b1. Not rushing with any captures. We have pawn to g4. Uh, and the Magnus stops the advancement with pawn to h4. We have queen to g6. Freeing up the h5 square for the knight. And the bishop to a5. Now going after the rook. The other bishop will of course take away the light squares. And then the d6 pawn will fall. There's no stopping this. So rook to d7. Uh, and the bishop to b5 by Magnus. We have rook d to f7, doubling up on the f-file, uh, but you're not really doubling up towards something. You've, you're doubling up towards your f3 pawn. And okay, maybe if you can get your knight here, capture on g3, maybe if white captures, maybe you can play f2. Those are a lot of maybes. So here, queen captures on d6, and now queen to h5. Of course, now knight to h5 is impossible as a queen trade. <laughs> it's not even a queen trade. Black will blunder a queen, so queen to h5. And now bishop back to c3, assuming this strong diagonal, but also uh, with the direct threat of queen or bishop captures on e5. So knight h7, and now the bishop defends on e5 as well, and bishop back to f1. Uh, we have bishop to f6, now trying to get some sort of... Of, uh, a game here, maybe even just sacrifice a piece. Uh, rook to b5. Magnus goes after the c5 pawn as well. He says the com the king side is completely blocked. I'm just going to capture everything on the queen side, push my pawns, and win the game. So knight to g5, trying to give up a, a, a knight for some sort of an attack, but Magnus just ignores it. He says whatever you do here, you're not uh, you can break through your own pawns. That's uh, that should be some something. Uh, maybe there is a quote about that. Yeah, but you you can't go through your own pawns. That doesn't matter. How many pieces you have the uh, in the attack? You can't go through your own pawn. So Magnus has played rook captures on c5. Knight to h3 with check and he eliminates the knight. Captures we have g captures on h3 and queen to e6 now going after the pawn here. And the problem is you can't. Uh, sacrifice anything because queen captures on e5 check just uh, forces a queen trade so here king to h7 was played on pinning trying to get some sort of an attack going but just queen captures on h3 and that's pretty much it bishop to h8 we have pawn to d6 magnus starts pushing the past pawn rook to g8 and now rook to c7 and he was in this position on move 39 that uh, tigran petrosian resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Whatever you do here, d7 is already covered, d7 is coming, uh, but you, you can also just play rook to d1, push the pawn, and there is no, there, there's no even a threat here. You can't even double up because then black, uh, wh white can also just trade, but just rook d1, and you don't have anything. You don't have sacrifices as uh, f, uh, the f1 and the queen are covering g3. You don't have uh, any uh, sort of way of getting the bishop into the game, so there is nothing here for black. Uh, so yeah, after drawing that game in round one, Magnus gains two victories, and we'll see if he's uh, able to, uh, to do more damage uh, on his way to defend his World Chess Championship title. Uh, but uh, a lot of players are on three out of three, such as Bharat Subramanian, Richard Rapport, Nihal Sarin, Arjun Erigaisi, uh, Narayanan, uh, Ivan Ceparinov, uh, David Anton Giharo, and Maxim Matlakov. And even more of it, Timur Garev on three out of three, uh, Alexander Shimanov, uh, Maxim Chigayev, Yu Yang Yi. So those are uh, 12 players on three out of three. Absolutely incredible. And if you have a favorite played by any of them do use that hashtag suggestion and i will go over them at one point uh so yeah that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it a good attempt by uh, by uh, tigran but uh, at that crucial point where he should have uh, uh, kept it cool you know just improved his position he went for that early f3 and uh, you can't rush anything against magnus uh, so yeah, uh, I would like to thank Jack Schroeder, Seyo Dadia, uh, Isaac Davis, Martin Georg Paparik, and Timothy Rosen for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. Really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Rapid Championship uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.